Michelle Granberg here, welcome to Positive Energy, enlightening television for the evolving soul. They say that the eyes are the window to the soul. The ancient art and science of iridology would agree. Iridology is the study of the iris and pupil for the purpose of understanding better what's really happening within our body, emotions, and spirit. My guest, Birgit Luders, is a master herbologist and practicing iridologist. She's going to introduce us to this holistic approach to well-being. Positive energy starts right now. What does an iridologist like yourself do? Okay, so iridology is that we check the structure of the fibers in the eyes and the colors mm -hmm. as well as the pupil. And so each individual has their own patterns and we analyze the patterns and it gives me gives me a lot of information about the body health, weaknesses, and strength. Wow, very cool. There's a lot in the eye. Yeah, so it's kind of like almost like you, you're drawing patterns. Ah. And each pattern becomes like a grouping. And once we group those eyes, we know to 80% then what their weaknesses could be, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. So how, how did you come to learn all of this and why? What type of training have you had? And in general, what kind of schooling is available to become an iridologist? So the way I became interested was I studied uh, herbalism and usually you need an assessment tool. And most herbalists use, uh, I think, the muscle testing. It's very common here in mm -hmm. America. Well, I wanted to make it more complicated for myself. And so <laughs> I chose iridology, which is a total out of field and a total new education. But once I dived into it, it was almost like I learned to, uh, to know more about the ocean. You know how right. biologists always say that we have no idea, 98% of the ocean, we don't know what's going on. Same thing. So the moment I started with iridology and I looked mm. into the eyes and I learned so much, I couldn't stop learning and studying it. Wow, so it sounds like it's not for everyone because it is so complex, but for someone like you, it was fascinating and you're yes. passionate about yes. it, so why not learn and go deeper into it? And I bet you learn more, all, more all and all the time. Exactly, and that's the thing, like I also have a center for iridology where I teach other people now how to do iridology, but it is first a learning curve. It's right. kind of like how to learn math, you know, I have a first grade at home and everything is complicated for her right now. <laughs> and that's the same thing with iridology, so it's very important to get uh, associated with an iridology school that has standardized and guidelines worldwide right. and that's the IPA organization the International Iridology Practitioner mm -hmm. Association they are here for that reason to keep it uniform standardized guided mm. so they're almost ready to even get it licensed if someday America would be ready for that so given that are there a lot of iridologists practicing in this country are they allowed to or are they mostly in Europe where you're from I, I've the way I noticed, most people always take a second turn when they say, what is iridology? So I assume there are not a lot of them <laughs> in America. Assumption is correct. <laughs> right, <laughs> because they're always like, what are you doing? <laughs> like when I say, oh yeah, I'm just going to do some iridology on you. So, um, but it's very common in the Asian world, in, in Europe. Right. Russia is doing phenomenal research on that side because iridology is really a, a priority for prevention care. So it prevents mm -hmm. things from happening. And, and, and so they, they invest a lot of money into figuring out how we can avoid things, you know, how we can avoid getting sick. Mm. That's true fully where the essence right. is of your ideology. And so ultimately that really is the goal of us as individuals to prevent that and yeah. hopefully in the broader scheme it saves money for mm -hmm. businesses and for and in healthcare in general we are always talking about bringing costs down. Exactly. So preventative care hopefully this is the wave of the future and more and more as we go along. Mm -hmm. So I know it's complex, but maybe for the average person, uh -huh. like myself, who doesn't <laughs> always understand things, what are the mechanics of iridology or more like how does it work? How does looking at the eye translate into the helpful information, practical mm -hmm. and helpful information that a client who comes to you can yeah. understand. Mm -hmm. So generally it's very easy. We just like literally take a picture from the eyes. Mm -hmm. And I brought my camera just to let people see how simple it can be. Because um, hundreds of years ago, iridology existed already too, but they just looked in the eyes with a magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. Well now in a digital technology world we're in, we had to switch to digital cameras as well. So it's much more accurate. Accurate. And, and you, you can get a much 
clearer picture. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Since we got the digital cameras, which we just put on like this, we can take a picture within seconds and then look together with the client at their own eyes, which is exciting too. Yeah, it, we've never seen our own eyes that yeah, close. Exactly. We're going to look at some of those in the second half mm -hmm. of our show. Very yeah. exciting. Mm -hmm. So what it happens then is um, we grouping those patterns together. So they're called constitutions and they're like color constitutions and structure constitution. That means we look how tight those fibers of the irises are okay. or how colorful the pigments are in the iris and all those little informations give us the, the summary of the person's health. Wow. I you really have to know what you're looking at, and, yeah. but there really is a, a system and, and, and a structure to it. Yeah, it's absolutely because we are grouping them, so we don't mm. look for every single tiny sign anymore. Like the way iridology started, we pointed like a million diseases out, <laughs> and then people were like just like, you know, frozen because that's not really helping. That's more building up fear. But now iridology is... It looks at the whole picture and points out two or three things. And with those two or three things, I can instantly work with my clients. Mm. I can, you know, deli uh, direct the diet into a little bit more like thyroid happy diet or mm. heart happy diet. So I look for the weakest link mm. and there we go. From there we... So, so you're, not, you're not really diagnosing per se, um, but you are looking, as you said, you're looking for patterns mm -hmm. and there and we've learned you've learned over time or they've learned over time that that there's a universality amongst us as humans yeah. as energy beings enough so that you can recognize certain diseases and conditions by yeah. looking at the eye yeah so that's exactly where it's important because you know the, the medical history wasn't so fond of iridology because mm -hmm. there were certain you know um consumption that we can see cancer for example in the iris but we can actually not there's not a specific sign for cancer but what we can see is where is the root cause the weakest link and then we go from there we build up it's like a plan we build up the roots mm. to become healthy and I always say symptoms are like leaves you know so if there's like thousands of little symptoms we don't want to focus on one leaf right. we want to go into the root so how about emotions? Because you're mm -hmm. saying we can read emotions by mm -hmm. looking at the eye and also strengths and weaknesses, sort mm -hmm. of character traits. So say a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the fantastic um, tool now to see because we, we, we all know in one opinion that body and mind is connected. Even scientists are absolutely on that same level of knowledge. And what is really created is the body and the, the mind, they create a so-called neuropeptide when we have certain emotions. And neuropeptide is like a nerve protein. So from that message, we know that specific emotions have actually a specific organ attached. Ah, so for I'm example, starting to understand. Yeah. So <laughs> for example, if you're like very fearful, fear is a, a very prone um, problem in our century right now because we are fearful about partnership, fearful about our jobs, you know, fearful to not get it all done. <laughs> so we live in a state of fear constantly and the emotion fear is actually attached to the organ adrenals. And the adrenals are on top of our kidneys and we know what adrenals do. They give us this right. rush that we can fight and flight. Right? So when that happens then, with emotional iridology, I can see if those um, symptoms are a little bit pr um, um, darker, that means then the adrenals have been overused mm -hmm. and they turn now down their energy and then they turn into chronic fatigue. Ah. Or if they're inflamed because the color is too bright in the adrenal area, then that's a sign that they're constantly in a state of anxiety. So when I see that, then I immediately can make my questions correctly. Because sometimes clients forget, you know, they have been always in the state of fear or, or mm. grief or whatever, that they actually need to bring it back to awareness and work with it. Wow, so you really can tell them things yeah. that they're not aware yeah. of or they've forgotten or it's yeah. in the subconscious. They must be like kind yeah. of surprised when you come up with some of that. So how about my favorite area, a little bit about that, the spiritual messages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm or uh, the spiritual aspects about us that come through by come through the eyes that field is is has just developed a thing because um as your show say positive energy i feel like the energy in the 
uh, universe is, is changing, changing and, and it increases its vibration. Yeah. And because it's so strong, now more and more people can feel energy around each other, like the auras. So it's the same with, with the iris now. We have gotten such strong digital cameras, strong energy around each person that we can see images, spiritual images within the pupil. So the pupil sometimes can show images, what the person thinks of, or it can actually... And so does that change? Does that stay exactly the same? So literally, if you <laughs> look at your eye one day and then two weeks later, two months yeah. later, it would look different. It's more of a, a map, right? Yes. A reflection, a yes. mirror of what's happening internally. Yes. And it's a little more literal and symbolic. Yes. Uh, if you know so, what you're looking at. Exactly. So in the beginning for me, I'm a little bit more left brain oriented, which is like I need facts and, you know, I like to analyze things. So seeing like images pop up in the pupil where there was no rhyme and reason for it was kind of putting me a little bit on a stand of what is going on here. <laughs> but now after a few years into it, more and more iridologists have talked about it and we see colors of chakras. Mm. So sometimes even the pupil shows, you know, a green light, which is for the heart chakra. That means the person has to work on their heart chakra. Or it shows an orange haze, which means, you know, like the second chakra. Is it always showing a lack or imbalance in the chakra? Or does it also show where it's, might it be where it's strong or overactive even? The or way I notice from my experiences over the years and years, it's always more like a hint from the spiritual energy to help them with that area, Okay, which is amazing. So that might be where intuition comes in, and yes. I love it because these days we're saying the best practitioner can mm -hmm. marry both. Sure, they yeah. can be very, is it left brain scientifically, yeah. uh -huh. and also right brained yeah. intuitive and, and bring those together into yeah. just, just a, a perfect synergy yeah exactly and that's why it's it's such an amazing tool for this century nowadays mm. because it's like a multi-dimensional right. tool interesting because it's so ancient right how yeah. old is iridology it goes or back a... almost to thousands be, be like uh, babylons like that's where it's found but uh, the most recent i mean i'm just reading a book right now from a practitioner from uh, in german language from the 19th century about you're talking about it yeah <laughs> smart people from the past. We think we're smart. We know it all, right? Okay, so you know what? Actually, we're going to pause here because mm -hmm. the next thing we're going to take a look at that you brought is some actual examples of clients from your own mm -hmm. practice, really interesting ones. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show those and talk a little bit more about how it all unfolds looking at the eye and, what it, and what it tells us. Awesome. Okay, Great. so we'll, we'll do that right now. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look. Mm -hmm. These are your actual client's mm -hmm. eyes, yep. one of their eyes. Mm -hmm. And what we have here, you're going to tell us a little bit about what yeah. this eye says about the, the physical body. Yeah, so I chose that, lim that lymphatic eye. So we group um, the colors together, which is very interesting because there's a blue, a mixed eye, which is brown, a little hazel, and mm. then the dark brown eye. Most people then ask, where is the green eye? And then we explain in neurology that it doesn't really exist. <laughs> doesn't exist. <laughs> but in don't get insulted, green yeah. eye people. <laughs> <laughs> you don't exist. You're just making it up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it's like there is a yellow haze over the blue. And the yellow is a color for kidneys. Oh. So that's why it looks green. So that's why we're not choosing it as a, a grouping. So for this eye, for example, um, the haze is white over it. So this means to 80% that kind of person who has blue eyes, very mm -hmm. bright eyes, and a little more, more gray or white, they have issues with the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. So they have more mucus buildup, you know, they have more like sinus problems, runny nose, coughs, a um, little bit more asthma because there's all this mucus stuck in there. So and that's what you told this particular client, and that was what that was true. Yeah, because and then, of the wait. exactly. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, go ahead. Um, and that's why I'm saying, like, because those little balls—they look like little cotton balls. See that? I see them. Those are signs sometimes from a mucus stagnation, and this is in the area of the lungs. So my first uh, question for that client would have been. Did you have asthma in your generations back or did you have problems and that person had uh, allergies, oh. chronic um, bronchitis too. 
That's cool. So in this case, I see that. Then I also see that very bright white. That's a sign that they're a little bit more acidic. So they have to change their diets to be more alkaline. Mm. So alkalinity means that we have a specific pH balance in our bodies and green food make it more alkalized and acidic foods you know like more protein makes it more acidic we need to be in a perfect balance if we get too acidic then there's the next thing that this typical blue eye person would experience would be arthritis or joint issues because the acid gets collected in their joints Mm. So in this case, then you know the next question would be: Do you experience already joint pain? Um, so and that's exactly what I do. So the IRS tells me information that has been found out from research, mm -hmm. and then I just make my information, uh, I make, analyze the eye, and then ask the correct questions. Right, and then you get yes or no's from them, and yes. then you, you can take it to the next step. Right, and then that's where your 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 training in nutrition and and mm -hmm. As, an, as a master herbalist yes. comes in because then you can actually make suggestions yeah. and tell them what to eat or mm -hmm. what herbs to take. That's exactly perfect. I always say it's the perfect matchmaker yeah, in odology. <laughs> you know, the whole matchmaker yeah. uh, apps now on this album. I feel like iridology is the perfect thing to match the right herb with the right person and the right diet with the right person because there's so much information out there dietary wise. Mm -hmm. But nobody really knows their own constitution, their own genetics. Right. And with iridology, I can give them little hints about yeah. that. And then it's not like a cookie cutter approach. Right. One thing for, every, for everybody. Yeah. You can really tailor it in that way. Exactly. For, for this eye, for example, I took that client off from dairy because mm. dairy has been prone to create a lot of mucus. Right. So if the genetics are already weak of creating a lot of mucus, then putting foods in it that creates mucus then you see where we're going. It's kind of like to their genetic health problems. Yeah. Well, should we look at the next one? Yeah. The next one, mm -hmm. the next eye is about the emotions. So what mm -hmm. did you see in this eye with this client about their emotions? Mm -hmm. Well, I chose this eye because it's so fantastically showing the connection between the mind and the stomach. Okay. Right? Because we, we have learned now that we actually feel in our stomach that our stomach is a second brain mm. and we actually know now scientifically that we produce serotonin which is a happy hormone in our stomachs ah. so i chose that because in this case you can see around here the pupil is always the center of your soul okay and then the first ring around the pupil in iridology is the stomach and then the further ring out is the large and small intestines. Do you see where I'm going? So Well, there's something going on there. I mean, there's something indicated. Yes. That isn't normal, quote unquote, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. So you can see already a little color change compared to the rest of the irids. Mm -hmm. You see a little bit orange and a little bit brown. So the color orange is connected with blood sugar. Mm. And slight brown is connected to the liver and gallbladder. So from there, I know physically already what we could change dietary-wise. But in emotions, this person, my first question would be, what is eating them? Right. Like it's not. That's what I was thinking. They have they have stress. Yes. They have anxiety. Yes. They have worry. Yes, and they're holding it all in. Like they connect so right. tight that it gets inflamed. So there is the emotion, like I said in uh, the beginning, is connected to specific organs. Right. So letting go or holding on to mm -hmm. is the stomach. Ah. and the, the intestines. So if they don't change the emotion, I'm sure you tell them too, which is the root cause mm -hmm. of that with the mm -hmm. mind-body connection, it's, it's not really, they're not gonna get very far. Exactly, so what I help them with them is, we use you know, therapies like you know, emotional freedom tapping. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. There's certain acupuncture points where you can say some ideas of what kind of emotions you're holding on to maybe some, some scenario that they never, like, never let go, like maybe a divorce where they were being take, um, treated unfairly, mm. then you want to tap it out, literally. Release it, let it go, relieve it. Nice. Now I can see why this is so holistic, right? Yeah. Mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And speaking yeah. of spirit, we're going to look at the next one, mm -hmm. which is the spiritual. Mm -hmm. You learned a lot spiritually about this yes. particular person. Yeah. So tell us about that. This is very, very interesting. <laughs> this is actually from my client who was blind. 
and she came up to me in one of those expos and was so adamant to get her eyes read but i told her that iridology only reads the iris which is the colored part over the pupil and and she does she didn't develop the iris through you know through her uh, being blind so she said I'll, I'll bet with you you will see some information from me and so i took the picture and you can see now the whole iris is suddenly a pupil and in the spiritual iridology the space between the fibers and the colors is where the soul tries to communicate with us mm. so this wow. is like beautiful if you really think about it. and that's why sometimes when you meet people who have very big pupils you feel immediately loved or invited mm. because their soul is so open and so, so open inviting and you connect with that mm -hmm. we all want to connect with each yes. other's soul that's what we really yes. want yeah and so what that helps now for me in a spiritual iridology is to either connect the image that we can see. Sometimes there's a meaning into it. Sometimes it can look like a person, a shape, a star, or some sort of. That's incredible. And it makes no sense most of the time for me when I blurp it out. <laughs> but most of the time, to 99%, <laughs> when I say something like that, it, mm -hmm. it immediately resonates for that person. That's sitting in front of me. Wow. And it must be a very powerful moment. Absolutely. And, and, and it's almost, then it's really undeniable that yes. there is something to this, yes. as if they, right? If they didn't already believe that really the eyes mm -hmm. are the window to yes. the soul. They really are maps yes. of our soul. Absolutely. And there's, I mean, some people think now the bigger pupils are more the friendly people or the small pupils and mm -hmm. all. There's all positive and negative. For example, when I have a client with a very big pupil or very, a lot of space open between the fibers, I need to teach them how to protect themselves better. Oh. Do you see? Because sometimes they're too open, they're too easy influenced, mm -hmm. and that can maybe cause you know, soul pain because they get off from their own path. Yeah. With the other person who is too enclosed to keep the soul protected and their intuition too much closed down, they need to be told to listen more carefully to their intuitive mind. Wow. And open so you up. can really give them so much mm -hmm. wealth of guidance. Yeah. And that's what you do, yeah. right? You sit one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one with people and do that. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that iridology can explain about the, the past and present? Anything else, um, anything else about diet that you want to add around that that, that iridology yeah. shows us? So iridology um, is still actually in its infant stage with all the research and everything we, we, we find out now, it's, mm. it's, it's mind blowing almost. And there is like one doctor in Italy right now, Daniel Riotto, he came up with the space or time risk iridology where he found out that the pupil is like a, a ticking of our years of age. So it goes like against the clock. And so when we are born, we are 12 o'clock. Mm. And then we go towards the left. Then we are one year, two years, three years, four years. And then it goes in a loop till 60 years and then starts again. The reason why I'm talking about that, that's something that I'm working right now and learning more about it is that when you see a certain loop or a certain gap in between, you can ask, what happened when you were like, 22 years old? I see the, I see the value in that. Exactly. I, I, that's really interesting. But can you can't also see how old they are by looking in someone's eyes, or can you see how long they're going to live, sort of, or <laughs> where they are in that timeline? Yeah. Potentially, <laughs> there's know. free will. I know nothing's written in stone. That's exactly where the universe made its decision that there is no time, actually, if you really think about it. Right that the past, present, and future is just made up in our mind in a way. And, and this is when I go into a field that I can't explain a lot. <laughs> but we are like in a linear time, but the universe is in a, in a vertical line, so everything mm -hmm. happens at the same time. The reason why I'm talking about this is when I see a sign, I need to ask to find out if I see that sign from a future or from the past. So when I say there's you know, a sign here on you know, the left, did you have any lung issues? And they say, no, I've never had any. Then it goes sometimes back to the generations before them. What about past lives? Can you see that as well? Potentially past, or not so much? Potentially Because we get a new iris every time we yeah. <laughs> incarnate. <laughs> I think so. I think we do get a new eye. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think the pupil, the black spot, the soul, might stay the same. Wow, isn't that interesting? But this is when you tapped into our 
We don't know. We just don't know. Yeah. Maybe we'll come back, we'll meet each other again, we'll have the discussion, we'll figure it out. Exactly. <laughs> I love this. Really the message here is really that our, our eyes are blueprints. Mm -hmm. They are like mini maps of our state. Just, mm -hmm. just, uh, and we can compare it to um, reflexology, yeah. or maybe mm -hmm. can we compare it to like our thumbprint, or we can compa mm -hmm. compare it to our astrology chart or yeah. our numerology chart. Yeah. These mini sort of maps and blueprints of, of the whole, more of the whole of who we are mm -hmm. and our journey mm -hmm. and where that's been and sort of where that is headed, mm -hmm. all expressing itself yeah. through our eyes. Yeah. That which is invisible to us sometimes, that which we can't necessarily see or feel. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty cool fe cool field. I hope more people will hear about it and 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 reach out mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, and that's and exactly. Others. Yeah, that's why I, exactly um, because I was so into it and I loved it so much and mm -hmm. wanted to share the passion. So I'm one of um, 25 instructors in America now who teach other people how to do iridology and I started the Center for Iridology mm -hmm. where I give iridology courses. Um, in Boston, New York, and Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. They are spread out throughout the year. People can see that on my webpage if they're interested. So give us your website and tell us, how. so how long does that course take? What's the commitment? I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. The commitment is like, um, they need to follow a level one and level two, and that's like four or five solid days. Then they get prepared for the international test mm -hmm. because the IPA actually want to test the knowledge from the students. So there is no, got it. You know, no free certification Xerox copies. Right. <laughs> you really have to prove. School. Yes. You have to prove that you know it, that you know your stuff. <laughs> right. And, and this is why I'm so proud of that because sometimes you know in a holistic field, sometimes people can go into a, a very easy, quick fix workshop and and then wave around the certification. Mm -hmm. Right, and call themselves that then. And in this case, they really get, you know, prepared yeah. well. And, and you can really trust the person yeah. if they have that certification, that they have the credentials yes. to really authentically know what they're talking about. And because you can not harm someone, mm -hmm. but certainly you can give them wrong information. So exactly. it's very, very vital in in that way. So give us your, your website where people okay. can find you. So it's www centerforiridology.com mm -hmm. and my personal practice is www.birgitcare.com so this is more about where I have my practice where people can sign up for having consultations on the Birgit Care um, I also have a calendar on which expos I'm part of I'm, I'm spread out throughout the whole year and all those holistic expos the next one that's coming up um, I think is um, I'm a speaker in Las Vegas at the International Iridology Practitioner Association, so that's exciting. And um, in March, um, I think April, there's the Body Mind Spirit Expo in Somerset. Yep. And then I'm um, in uh, June, I think, in um, New Hope. They always have a solistic fair or something like that. So if you're interested to see where I am, I give um, quick readings at those expos. So just like kind of give people a sense what I can do. So look into the eyes and in 10 minutes can give them little quick tips. I hope people will track you down <laughs> one of those ways, find you and take advantage of this because this has been really valuable and really interesting information and I imagine very enlightening for people. So we're just about done. Do you want to leave us with any final message and on a final positive note? Anything you'd like to say? Well, uh, usually uh, always I'm always intrigued with different quotes and now that I live in America, um, Theodore Roosevelt had a great quote, which was, keep your eyes to the stars and your feet grounded. Perfectly balanced yeah. on the ground <laughs> and a little bit up here. Isn't iridology fascinating? Did you learn a lot? Let me know what you thought about today's show. Thank you for watching. Remember to nurture your soul, be kind to one another, and join me next time on Positive Energy.